except for that one little incident of that I've midget. Done it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Here's what happened. <laughs> Mr. Monk, I have been praying for such a one as you to help me. Right. Pablo is innocent. When you talk to him, you will see. Whoa, whoa. when I talk to him, uh, no, I, 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 I never agreed. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Maria, I'm so sorry, <laughs> sweetie. How do you know my mother? From her work at the factory, I'm a big fan. A uh, fan? Uh, Pablo, your mother asked that we look into your case. We'd like to hear your side. I did not kill Clea Vance. That is my side. I never met her. I never see her. There was a fashion show at a big hotel. I was a delivery boy. I deliver some clothes there. Then I go home. And the next day, I'm arrested. Esto es una pesadilla. It is a nightmare. Pablo, your DNA was all over the victim. Your blood, your hair. How do you explain that? I don't know. It's a mistake. Uh, a misunderstanding. Clea Vance had a roommate who testified that Clea was afraid of you. She said that you were stalking her. Look, this is right here. Pablo Ortiz was obsessed with her. You see that right there? I see it. You're lying, Pablo. It doesn't say that. You can't read English, can you? No, sir. I was raised in Mexico with my father. I have been here three years only, and I can speak English, but I cannot read. Where are you going? Didn't you hear? I'm retiring. There's a party for me on Friday if you want to come. Cool, absolutely. I'm there. You're retiring. How old are you? 46. Did you win the lottery? No, I've been investing. Real estate. What have you been doing with your savings? Uh, eating. You know, I need to talk to my accountant. Wait, you have an accountant? Nope. I'm gonna have to get an accountant, then I'm gonna talk to him. There's something wrong with this picture. What? I don't know. Something. So these are her shoes? That's right. Yeah, you see this blood and this hair and these fibers? They all belong to Pablo Ortiz. It's a slam dunk. Yeah, I don't see any wiggle room here, do you? No, we got the right man. People lie. People lie all the time, but DNA? It never lies. I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe he's not the guy. You see, there's this exit door. Look, I heard about the exit door. Right there. Look, Monk, I'd follow you anywhere, but I've got four cases on my plate right now. But you have fun. Knock yourself out. Thanks, Gordo. See at the party. Here's the statement from that Natasha Zorel. She with the victim's roommate. Let's start with her. Did you just say you were uh, going to go and talk to Natasha Zorel? The supermodel. Is that her? Yeah, actually, uh, I've got the rest of the day off. I should probably go with you guys. You know, I think I'll come along, too, in the interest of... Uh... Justice? Yeah, justice. You were Clea's roommate? Yeah, and best friend. I see. I see. I see. Uh, oh, 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 oh. It's OK, I'm not shy. You have, uh, you have something on your shoulder. Oh, it's a mole. It's my trademark. Yeah, did, did, did you know Pablo uh, Ortiz? I didn't know him, except that Cleo was terrified of him. He was stalking her. Yes, there, there's no evidence of that. No phone calls, no other moles. I mean, witnesses, no other witnesses. Are you saying I made it all up? Um, Why would I do that? I don't know. Look, I saw what I saw. He brought her flowers, he hit on her. I already testified about all this a year ago. I read your statement. Then read it again. Julian. Hi. Hey. You surprised? Not after today. I figured you might be freaking out. Do they know anything? I don't think so. You're not smoking. No, no. Uh, you know, cigarettes, they tend to leave a nasty odor. I wouldn't want them to know I was here. Who? 
The police? Oh, I didn't tell them anything. But you will. Eventually. But... It's not your fault, my darling. You're just too pretty. A beauty like yours, a, a face like this. You just wouldn't be able to take the pressure. How's it look, Gordo? Well, it looks like suicide, smells like suicide. Smart money's on suicide. She drained two of those bottles and maybe 30 sleeping pills. Were those prescription? Probably not. She probably got depressed after you spoke to her. All those memories about the murder bubbling up. I don't think so. There's one set of fingerprints on the glass. Well, yeah, they're hers. But look, she's wearing lipstick. There's no lipstick on the glass. Somebody wiped down the glass and then put it back in her hand. OK. This is now a homicide investigation. Lock this joint down. Nobody touches anything. Julie, have you forgot something? Huh? What? Have you forgot that when it comes to my art, I'm a total monster? I mean, just look at yourself. Look, you're a mess. I mean, look here. Look at this. Look at the collar. Look, it's all twisted. And, and, and all these wrinkles on the dress. I mean, look, sweetheart. Natalie, when you, wear you have the case clothes, file. What? You. The case file. Give it to me. That bag that you seen wearing my clothes like this. I knew something was wrong. Look, look at this. Her body is all contorted. The collar and her buttons are perfectly straight. After he killed her, he straightened them out. He couldn't help himself. He's the guy. Who's the guy? He's taking Julie home. Well, why on earth would she do that? Because I told her that you killed Clea Vance a year ago. And I'm betting that you killed Natasha Zorel last night. Who else would have straightened the clothes on Clea Vance's body? Oh, and why would I do something like that? I would have. Is that it? I straightened out the clothes? <laughs> I mean, that's not evidence. That, that's a hunch. That's all it is so far. You trust your instincts, don't you? Oh, yes. And would it be the same infallible instinct that you used when you picked out that jacket? Or when you did those buttons right up to the top on your shirt? Huh? <laughs> what about the evidence, Mr. Monk? What about, well, you've heard of DNA, right? I mean, does that ring a bell here? Hmm? DNA, yes. The fibers, the hair, and the blood. They all belong to that boy, Pablo Ortiz, who's in jail. It couldn't have been me. Just not possible. Berto, thanks for getting here so fast. Sure, what's going on? Get a load of this. OK, there was a fashion show upstairs in the ballroom. I remember last year. And one of the models, as you know, showed up drunk. Clea Vance? Exactly. So drunk, according to Julian Hodge, that she almost ruined his show. He was furious. I think he followed her down here. They argued. He lost control. He killed her. He beat her to death right here. Julian Hodge? What about the evidence? He planted it. He framed Pablo Ortiz. Is that possible? How could he plant all that evidence and clean up every trace of himself? Actually, he didn't. He missed something. Check this out. See, there was a health inspection the day before. They hung that fly paper in the corner. How'd we miss it? We just found it this morning. Behind that radiator, it must have fallen back there during the fight. And look, there's three or four hairs stuck to it. And they can't be from Clea Vance because she had long hair. They must belong to Julian Hodge, the real killer. This is the proof we need. How soon can you do a test on those? I'll get right on it. Good work. Thanks. There's somebody here I'd really love for you to meet. Oh, there he is. Oh, come on. What, now? Oh, yeah. Can't it wait? No, no, no. He's very important. For the record, Gordo, is this your report? For the record, yes, it is. Uh huh. And you examined these hair samples that we found earlier today. I did. And were you able to match these hairs to any individual? Yes, sir. And for the record, who do these hairs belong to? Pablo Ortiz. Ortiz? Oh, isn't that the boy who's already in jail for the murder? <laughs> well. I think, gentlemen, we're finished here. Don't mind if I get back to my pot. Hang on. Hang on. Gordo, I'm sorry, but you're under arrest. Accessory to murder and falsifying evidence. What? 
Here's what happened. When you did the forensic work on the Cleo Vance murder, you realized all the evidence pointed to Julian Hodge. You decided to cash in. You made Hodge an offer he was in no position to refuse. For a price, you'd bury the evidence against him. There was only one problem. You had to close the case. You needed a fall guy. Hodge remembered a young delivery boy named Pablo Ortiz, a poor kid, barely spoke any English. He was a perfect patsy. Hodge got Natasha to help him. She called the police and accused Ortiz of stalking her roommate. The police arrested Pablo. They took hair and blood samples and sent them to you. And the rest was easy. All you had to do was relabel them. Pablo never had a chance. You can't prove any of this. We don't have to. You proved it for us five minutes ago when you swore that these hair samples belonged to Pablo Ortiz. So you planted that hair to test him? Well, yeah. Whose hair was it? It was mine. Natalie pulled it out with a tweezers. She just yanked it out. It's jungle out there. Disorder and confusion everywhere. No one seems to care. Well, I do. Hey, who's in charge here? It's jungle out there.